Alright, well, we're going to start working on a second centipede board. I've already noticed a couple issues from just looking at it. Like right here on the edge connector. At one point it got damaged. And somebody put, oops, an extra thick piece of metal around it. I mean, it works, but you're going to cause a lot of damage to the actual connector. So we're going to have to replace the connector eventually. Um, what I also noticed when I was playing it, it seems like it's having a problem with the horizontal. Something like that. So, we'll just plug this in real quick. And, I'll show you what I mean. Alright, got the board hooked back up. We'll go ahead and we'll turn it on. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, it's working. So I'm starting to think the little <clears throat> excuse me. Starting to think the little glitchiness that I was seeing earlier, I don't have it on camera, is probably just from having a bad connection right here at the edge connector. Oh, there it kinda hard to see. Kind of see it shake a little. See that? I'm thinking that's part of the edge connector. Something I do want to try quick is I was looking at the schematics and there is a chip at M3 right there. Let's see if it'll focus. Right, anyway, yeah, that chip, oh, wrong chip, that chip right there, that controls the horizontal output. So, I got a new one right here, and we're just going to go ahead and pop it on the top and just see if that fixes anything. Or changes anything. We'll, we'll just see. And there's no guarantee that that's going to work. Because it doesn't always work when you piggyback a chip. Yep. <clears throat> you still got a little shakiness in there. So that most likely has nothing to do with this. What we'll do is we'll repair the edge connector. All right, we're now at the little workbench, and we're gonna go ahead and take this thick piece of metal that they put on the edge connector off, and we're gonna replace it with a little bit of copper foil tape. So, looking at it, I can already see that it's pretty loose. So it shouldn't take too much to really take it off. Probably use a better pair of pliers. There we go. As you can see, the old edge connector finger burnt right off. So, yeah, I did look at this. This is the ground, and it wraps to the other side. So we can just wrap the foil tape around, and it'll be fine. So one of the first things we'll do is we're going to get that glob of solder right there. Remove that. And I got the iron heated up. Should probably dip it in some tip tenner. And we'll remove that solder. Desoldering braid in place. All right. 
there's that side. I'll take a nice close look at it here. Yeah, it looks like it's still actually there. I wonder if we can just clean it up a bit. Hmm. Let's see here. I might have a little bit of sandpaper. Maybe do a little sanding on it and see if that fixes anything. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and readjust this real quick. a little better. Let's see here, are you gonna focus? Enough, I guess. Let's see here. Yeah, it's definitely exposing it now. So the finger is still there. It must have been. Maybe the other side burnt off or something. Maybe they thought they just had a really bad connection and had to thicken it up a bit. Not really sure. I don't really recommend going this far, but this thing's actually in pretty rough shape. Multimeter and do a little continuity, see what it does. It's still connected, it might work just fine still. Hmm, I guess let's flip it over, see what the other side looks like. Did you adjust it here? Go. Maybe. I think that finger is still on that side yet, too. Well, let's just go ahead and desolder this. Yeah, that one came off it. See, it's missing. So now we will have to put uh, the copper foil tape on there. Okay, make sure we have a nice little surface for it to adhere to. It is adhesive. 
And thankfully we're on the end of the edge connector. Because my copper foil tape is technically a little wider than a finger. So what I gotta do normally would trim it down. But I'm not gonna trim it. There's no need to right now. It doesn't need to wrap around or anything. So we'll just take a small piece of it. Put it on and we'll trim it at the edge. Alright, now I got the backing off. So, we'll very carefully try and line this up. There we go. Keep it as straight as we can. There. Okay. Now, we'll just take a razor blade and go ahead and trim this up a little bit. There we go. Nice and flush. Now, we got to actually connect it from this little piece right into that. Because that goes to the other side. So, put a little bit of solder on it. We don't need very much at all. Just enough to connect the two together. And honestly, that was probably too much solder, but it's going to work. Alright, now we'll check it with the meter. Seems good. Look at the finger on the other side. Good to go. Alright, now we can test it out and see how well it works. Alright, now I got the board plugged back in. So we're going to go ahead and see if that changed anything. Oh, I guess. Kind of have to have power on. There we go. No sparks. So that's a good start. It's still working. Still got a little bit of a, a jump to the image though. Could be the monitor needing a little adjustment, but I'm not sure. I rebuilt it and adjusted it with the last board. And it didn't shake like this, so... Maybe, maybe we do have an issue with the uh, horizontal sync IC on M3. That's an LS74. We can always try and just replace that and see what happens. But, I mean, seems like the game itself actually works. So, that's a bonus. I wonder if I could get it to coin up, though. Oh wait, it should have a service switch, actually. Yep, there we go. Got the service button. Yeah, the game works just fine. It just has that little bit of a shake. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. There we go. So I think what we're going to do is we're first going to make a little adjustments to the monitor once. Just see if that changes anything. And if not, we'll go ahead and replace that LS74 at M3 and see if maybe that helps it. Alright, so we are back and we're going to go ahead and adjust the monitor just a little bit. See if that shakiness kind of goes away. And what we're looking for is kind of a tight fit in these cocktails. It's right there. See if I can't point to it. That one right there. That's a horizontal frequency potentiometer. So we are going to take our little screwdriver 
and we're going to go ahead and try to adjust that very, very slowly because it's just shaking a little bit. So it might not even have to do with that potentiometer because I did completely rebuild this monitor and the potentiometer was working fine. So it could still be an issue on the board, but only one way to really find out. Try to remove that wire a little bit. Yep, I've even replaced big blue. Kind of have to do that. It's a common thing to do. But I'm going to get you set up in the tripod. We'll get this powered up and see if any of those adjustments work. Hopefully, they do. There we go. Let's see here. Just set up. That should be good. Such a tight fit, I have to get the screwdriver in first and then turn the game on. Otherwise I risk uh, touching things I don't want to touch with this. Alright. Get set up here. Okay. We are on the potentiometer now. And we'll turn it on and see what it does. seem to be doing anything. Now let's see what let's see what happened here. Why is it doing nothing now? Where it was doing things yesterday. Okay. See all that movement there? That's from the horizontal hold. So we're gonna go ahead and try and get the screwdriver back down there in a nice safe spot so I don't get zapped. Okay. Alright. Try this again. Hmm. Boy, that sure is strange. There we go. Now we got it doing its... I just gotta get the screwdriver put back in. We'll get it.
best that we can. That's probably the best we're going to be able to do, really. <laughs> Let's try and put... Alright, well, it took forever. I didn't realize my battery was completely dead. I had to get more batteries here. But, I got it adjusted from the monitor. The only thing is, it still does have a very small shake. And it's extremely hard to see on the camera. Maybe you can see it, but it's there. And I did end up snapping on that M3. So, we might want to just go ahead and replace it anyway. It's an LS74, and those aren't too horribly expensive, so it's not really that big of a deal. So, I'm going to go ahead and get set up to replace that chip, and we'll kind of see what goes from there. Alright, I just want to do a quick little update while I'm setting everything up for this, and kind of show that uh, this whole time I've been running the game, and that little shakiness has not returned. And this whole time, I've been running it with that new chip on it. And again, it's just piggyback, so it's not perfect, but this could be the issue. I'm kind of hoping it is. If it is, that'd be a pretty simple little fix. But I just want to give that update that so far, it's been running great. So we'll bring the board over to the bench and get that IC replaced. And give it another test and see if that was our issue from the get-go. Alright, I just want to show you this real quick. This is the centipede schematics. And right here, when you look, it says horizontal sink. Now, AB-10 AB is part of this sink circuit. But the chip that we're looking at, M3, is right here. It's an LS74. And as you can see, it has all the horizontal sink coming out of it. I don't have the chip needed for AB10, so we're going to go ahead and try the M3 and see if that's the whole issue whatsoever. I'll have to run the game for a few days, see if it comes back, but just kind of wanted to show you the schematic and my thought process and what could be causing this issue. Alright, so we're at the workbench now and we're going to go ahead and replace that IC real quick. Uh, there's a few different ways you can actually do it. This is just the way that I do it. Just gotten used to it. I don't have one of those Hacko desoldering guns where you can suck the solder out. Uh, that'd be a more preferred way to do it. Flip it over, suck the solder out of each pad, and just pop the IC off. But the way I'm going to do it is take a set of angle cutters, cut each leg, take the body off, and then take a little set of tweezers, heat up the solder on the top side of the board and just pull the leg out. After that, I'll take desoldering wick and clean the solder pads up. And once that's all cleaned up and I check it to make sure I didn't damage any pads or lift any traces, I will add the new IC and we'll solder it in. But first, we gotta get the old one out. So we just kinda go around and clip the legs. It takes a little bit of patience. And I probably could use new clippers too. Let's we'll start over here. There we go. That's simple. Now, there's a couple of ways you can remove them. You can do it, like I said, with the tweezers. <clears throat> or you can use a small pair of 
needle nose pliers. Uh, since this particular board has exposed traces and pads on both sides, uh, it's just easier for me to take the tweezers and heat it up on this side of the board and just pull the legs out. I have a lot more to grab onto. Otherwise, you can take your pliers or tweezers, grab onto a leg, put the board on its side or upside down or wherever you're comfortable with, heat the solder pad on the opposite side, and just pull the leg through once the solder becomes liquefied. But I'll pull a couple of legs here the way I've been doing it, and we'll go from there. So you just kind of get it a little warmed up. Grab the leg, pull it right out. That's simple. We'll do another one quick. Get a little warmed up, grab the leg, pull it right out. Alright, that's pretty much how you do that. <clears throat> now, I'll finish this side in just a little bit. All I do at this point is I take a little bit of this desoldering braid, place it over the pad, and just gently suck up the solder. Now you want to be very careful, especially with these older boards. You don't want to put a lot of pressure. You could easily lift up a pad or a trace. It's fixable, but if you can prevent it, you might as well. Now, sometimes you have to just flip the board over and grab the solder on the other side too. And that's fine. It's better to take your time than rush and cause a lot of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And then we'll come back and we'll insert the new IC. Alright. So, got the chip removed, all the legs. This camera is not that great, but as you can see, no damage. I checked it with the meter. Everything's good to go. So, now we just need to put the new IC back in there. And as you can see, it's got a little image printed right on the board, which shows the orientation of the chip. And most ICs, as you can see, as the ones next to it, have a little notch in it. See? That's how you would put it in. Pretty easy. So, we will get set up. And put in the new chip. If I can get this thing in here. There we go. So we have our new chip. And I've already kind of pre bent most of the legs. But all you need to do is find a flat surface, not the circuit board, obviously, but. And just kind of evenly press all the legs until they're the correct width. Kind of get into these little holes. You don't want it to be too loose. You don't want it to be too tight. But like that. That's a little loose. But it will work. It's oriented correctly. Chip is in place. So all we have to do now is flip the board over and just solder it in place. Uh, just for added security. Since I got these legs, so it's a little looser than I like, I'm just going to put a little piece of tape across it quick. It'll help hold it in place while I solder it on the other side. There. So, we'll get this flipped around. Uh, 
Alright, so, all we really have to do is get a little bit of solder on a couple of corners. Once we have some solder right there, there, or there, or there, the chip's really not going to go anywhere. And then you can take your time and get each leg soldered, and then we can test it from there. Now, I don't have the proper diameter solder at the moment, so I just have to use what I got. I just have to be careful not to overdo it. I guess you can consider this more like a tack weld. Because I'm not fully putting all the solder I should put on there. I just want it to hold it in place a bit. I'm going to hold it there for just a little bit. And that's just to give it some time for the solder to flow to the other side of the board as well. We obviously don't want too much solder, so it's just something you got to practice with. Get myself some more solder. Did not mean to move the board like that. Alright, now I can go around in my corners I tacked and make sure I get enough. pretty good flip it over take that off you know move it over so we can see here Let's see where is it there it is okay all right it's looking pretty good so, we will let the IC cool down just a little bit, because it does kind of get hot when you're soldering it in place. Uh, but once it cools down, I'll go ahead and plug it in, and we'll give it a test and see if it changes anything. Hopefully it does, otherwise I'm going to have to order a couple of those other ICs that I don't have, and see if that might fix the little, uh, the glitchy, kind of hiccupy horizontal problem that's got going on 
but let's go give it a test to see what happens. Alright, now well, I got the board hooked back up. <clears throat> Excuse the dark. Uh, when I turn it on, I want to be able to give it a better chance of being able to see it. So, let's give it a test. See what it does. Got a light on, so that's good. No sparks, that's great. And there we go. Now my eyes are not the greatest, but it is very hard for me to see that shake. So I'm kind of thinking that might have fixed it. Now I have to let it run for a while, make sure nothing else kind of happens. But it seems like it might have worked. That's pretty cool. Well, let's give it a quick gameplay. And we'll see if everything else is working on it. If I can get this in the holder. There we go. Okay, now, that's not the greatest image for the gameplay, huh? I guess it's the best one I'm going to be able to get with this camera. So we'll hit the free play button here. And here we go. And again, I am terrible at centipede. But all the motions seem to be working. It's forward, backward, left, right, shooting. Seems like all the sounds are there. Definitely not going to be winning any centipede tournaments anytime soon, that's for sure. Alright, yeah, I am terrible at this game, but it's working. So, I'm going to call that a win for now. You can just keep it running for a while and make sure that it doesn't go back to its old self again. Alright. Well, that's centipede board number two, working. Uh, I have to find another circuit board to work on. I'll have this cabinet for a good year, so let's see if I can't find more to fix up while I have this perfect test bench. Alright, on to the next project.